nerd glasses on, let me explain. My name is Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. This is Professor Meatball, and today, I'm gonna explain to you why so many people are becoming millionaires by buying GME stock with dog food. Let's say there's only a finite amount of dog food in the world. It's this much dog food that ever existed. Well, Meatball loves to eat this dog food. However, I hate it. I think that it's tacky, I think this brand is bad, and I think it's about to go out of business. So, I have a special idea. I know about economics, it's supply and demand. If there's a lot of supply, then the demanders get to set any price that they want. And then the opposite is true. If there's a lot of demand, then the suppliers can set any price that they want. Well, what if there was a lot of supply? Wouldn't the price go down and down and down until the company goes bankrupt? Theoretically, yes, which is how it's worked a lot in the past with hedge funds trying to short a stock. Let me explain what shorting is first. It's me going up to Meatball and saying, hey, it's time to feed you. I owe him food as a dog owner all the time, but today I'm deciding to be an irresponsible dog owner. Today I'm gonna say, this food that I owe you, this food that you have to eat multiple times a day, well, how about I put it on your nose for now? Perfect. And now that it's on your nose, you can't eat it quite yet, but if you hold out, I'll give you a little extra, a little extra treat because you were patient. Dogs do this all the time. They understand that holding a trick or doing a specific action helps them get rewarded for more treats in the future. So that's why he's being patient and allowing the treat to be put on his nose. This is not the short quite yet. In order for this to be a short, I need to, while he thinks the dog food is on his nose, take the dog food off and then sell it. Give it to another dog. Do something with it that gets me the dog food and exchanges it for money. The only thing you have to realize is when I do that, I'm expecting the price of the dog food to go down. When it's time for Meatball to eat the food that is on his nose, it's not. I already took it off his nose and sold it. I'll just buy it back from the supply of dog food. By selling the dog food, I've increased the supply artificially. So far right now, Meatball is a dog that is not eating and another dog has gotten to eat. Therefore, the amount of demand has been satisfied even though there was only one dog treat that existed. Intuitively, this is the opposite of buying a stock. You buy a stock because you think the company's value is gonna go up or that at least the price of the stock is gonna go up. Well, if you think the price of the stock is gonna go down, that process of taking the dog treat from someone else and then selling it immediately, promising to give it back to them later, but you know that it's gonna be cheaper later, that is the process of shorting. However, shorting gets better than that. Imagine if we can drive the price of this dog food to zero or to bankruptcy if we sell enough of this dog food, artificially increasing the supply a ton. If I do that, then all the little meatballs waiting for their food, I can just tell them, well, you were waiting for dog food from this specific brand. Well, this brand has gone bankrupt, so there is no more food from this brand. Therefore, I'm sorry, I can't give you a stock that doesn't exist. Did I say stock? I meant to say dog food, but you start to get the analogy. The amount of stocks in this bucket is the amount of finite dog food in the world. And that's the sad part. It's finite. I can only short as many stocks that exist, right? Let's put our big brain glasses on. If I sell this stock and then immediately short it again, as in I sell it to a dog that looks a lot like Meatball, put it on his nose and say, I'll take that and I'll give you a little extra in a second and then give it to another dog and then to another dog and then to another dog. If I keep doing that, then essentially I've overshorted the stock. If enough people do it, then you could promise more stock than actually exists. This is what's happening to GME. There is more dogs waiting for dog food than there is dog food that exists in the world. Now this is a risky move by me, the irresponsible dog owner, also known as the hedge funds. You see, if I end up having to give them the dog food that they're waiting for, then there's not enough dog food to go around. So I'm gonna be in big trouble. However, all I'm betting on is that this brand of dog food is gonna go bankrupt before I have to settle any of my debts. So that's where a bunch of clever Redditors, uh, people from Wall Street Bets, decided to get together and work against me. You see, those clever Redditors decided to go to as many dog food stores as possible, and they decided to start buying up the dog food. So that when I have to settle a debt, 
I don't have a lot of choices. And with fewer supply choices, the suppliers get to set the price. So now that all the efforts I had of trying to suppress the price of this food starts to go to waste. In fact, if I sold this stock for less than it's currently worth and I have to settle this debt, then I have lost money overall. I have a couple options though. Let's say that the price of the dog food is a lot higher than when I sold it, when I tried to short it. What if Meepo says, I wanna eat right now? Then I'd have to go buy this dog food at a higher price than I sold it for and then take a loss, even though I have to pay him extra for him being so patient this whole time. I could tell him to continue to be patient by promising him more dog food at the end of the day, but that is going to be a tricky sell if this price of the dog food never comes back down. If enough of the Redditors buy and then hold on to the supply of dog food, I'm gonna have a really hard time driving the price of the stock down, right? Driving the price of the dog food down. There's only so much of the dog food in the world. And eventually, when all of those overshorted stocks need to be repaid, it's not gonna work. It's been overshorted. There's 40% more dogs waiting for food that they think is on their nose than there is food out there. When those hungry dogs need to eat, when those debts need to be repaid, then there is gonna be something called a squeeze. Right now, I have artificially increased the supply in the market by feeding a dog and telling another dog to wait, thereby creating two pieces of dog food out of just one. However, when all these dogs need to eat, and there's not enough dog food to go around, there's gonna be a springing squeeze. It's going to elastically move in the opposite direction, creating a lot of artificial demand as debts need to be called and paid one after another recursively. So when the squeeze has been squoze, as in when the squeeze finally happens and the price of the stock can only rise higher and higher as all of these debts have to be mandatorily paid for, you might become a millionaire even if you bought just a handful of GME stocks. The price is estimated to go up to 1,000, 5,000, even higher. Technically has the potential to go to infinity. When it does though, it's probably going to get the attention of some government folks, and we are gonna be in uncharted territory. This is why currently you are in the midst of a revolution. And you, my friend, I'll see you on the moon. Peace.